Self-defense tip number five. Punch, elbow, and neck break. Find yourself in situations. Your opponent's coming at you with an overhand right. A body shot. Again, slow. My opponent's coming at me with, with an overhand right or a wide right or some kind of haymaker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duck down low again, get my center of gravity low. I'm going to hit him with either a punch, either a groin strike, or an elbow. In this case, an elbow would probably be optimum because I have to stop his whole body from coming at me. He's moving at me. He's rushing me with a huge strike. I have to get lower like I'm playing football, bang, and stop him. Once I stop his forward momentum, I come here with the elbow, elbow the back of his head, come around. What I'm doing is, instead of doing a traditional guillotine choke where I'm taking the neck and cutting off his air or his blood, this one, I'm turning his neck sideways and his face is pointing out that way. And what I'm doing is trapping it against my body with his head down. And once I'm here, all I have to do is fall backwards to break his neck or other things move at it. Slow, down slow. Elbow, back of the head, goes for the neck break. Goes for a slap grab and twist. This time he opts to do a takedown and then strike to finish him. And then stomp. Again, slow. Elbow to the neck break. Go slap grab and twist and throw. Punch and then stomp and then gets out of there. Again, full speed. Hey, quick announcement about a flash sale. I'm giving away this stunning foot long fixed blade full tang knife along with an awesome sheath to the first 200 guys who get to the link in the description. It's called the Titan. I just call it the big ass knife. The closest thing I can compare it to is a classic K-Bar and if you want the $70 knife for just shipping, you'll have to act fast. Okay, back to our video. Self-defense tip number four. Let's talk about vital targets for a second. Um, as a small person that I am, if I am going to attack somebody, I'm going to attack probably a vital target first. And for the most part, there are three vital targets, the eyes, the windpipe, and the groin. Windpipe is made of cartilage. It can be easily crushed. The eyes are, are pretty pliable. And you can, I've actually stuck my finger knuckle deep into somebody's eye, this knuckle deep. And I have crushed somebody's testicles before. Um, but I'm going to add one more target to that, and that's the ears. I've also had each of my eardrums perforated, and if you've ever had that happen to you, it is excruciatingly painful, you're disoriented, your equilibrium is gone, and that happens in a matter of a second or two. So one of the things that I did on this man <clears throat> from behind again is I popped the ears, and you want to get that suction, you want to get that nice hit, make sure you're hitting flat on the palm here, so the ear is within it, and you get that suction when you pull it away and you have to slap it pretty hard. So in that respect, he may stand up, he may turn. I mean, there's lots of ways that somebody's gonna to react to that, because when I say earlier that the body reacts away from pain, well, how do you react away from both your ears? Other than your hands going to it, you may go down to one knee, because you are gonna lose your equilibrium, and you are gonna be very disoriented, and you are gonna be sick to your stomach. So all of those things may happen. In that case, once I hit him in the ears, I'm not quite sure what to expect, other than the fact that he's gonna have a very hard time turning and fighting me back. At this point, I bumped the knee as I struck with my forearm to the base of the skull. One of the nice spots in the base of the skull, hop back up, Jeff. You turn this way, right here between the base of the skull and the spine, there's a lot of nerve endings, and it's, it's what we call one of the sweet spots. You can easily knock somebody out hitting him here or in the ground nerves on the side, okay? from the ganglia all the way down into the ground nerves right in here. Self-defense tip number three. First counter we're going to go over today to the double leg is what we like to call the guillotine. When my opponent shoots in on me, first thing I'm going to do is sprawl. Get my hips away from him so he can't get a hold of my legs or my hips or try to suck my hip in. After he sprawls, I'm going to reach around his neck and try to get under his chin so I'm right on his carotid artery and around his jugular. 
I'm going to try to use the sharp point of my bone here to cut into his neck. As he starts to come back up, I'm going to walk it in and reach back across and grab my own hand. Let me show you here. As he says, I'm going to grab my own hand here. As he starts to come into me, I'm going to throw my hips forward and, and raise up and hang him. He's, he'll be hanging himself with my arm across his throat. One more time, shoot over here. He shoots. I sprawl. I come across his neck. He starts to come up. I grab my own hand. I throw my hips forward. When you do this, you, want, you do want to be aggressive. You want to go ahead and take this guy out when you, you latch it in, suck his neck up, and go ahead and try to take his head off when you, when you apply it. When you start practice submissions, guillotines, or any submission, you really have to take it, apply the pressure slowly. All these, uh, pretty much all these submissions, even from chokes to arm bars or whatever, there can be long-term damage. If you're doing a choke, you, you know, if you do it too hard, too fast, you can, you know, crush your, your training partner's um, windpipe. You can, you know, you can do some serious long-term damage. So when you, especially when you're drilling submissions, you want to, you want to kind of do like a steady pressure. You know, you're not, you don't grab this and go ahead and instantly arch and try to take the, your uh, partner's head off. You want to grab it slowly, apply s slow, steady pressure, give your uh, partner time to tap out. This is a foot long, full tank, fixed blade knife for 70 bucks, but I'm giving it away to the first 200 guys who get to the link in the description. Just pay shipping and I'll rush one out to you right away. Back to our video. Self defense tip number two. Gus is hand to hand combat or fighting, and it's when someone grabs you or they're going to be throwing punches you will note that we're going to deal with the realism of what's going to happen to you on the street. The realism is there's big, powerful people up there. We only fight their weakest points. We always have the mindset that they have a weapon with them and that they have friends. If you keep this in your mind, you'll be a much safer person on the street. Experiment and work together. So the beginning of your training is very simple. You must teach yourself not to back up not to back up ever. On the street, when you're caught, say just as a grab, when you're caught, never fighting the man's strength. This is waking him up. You see so many people thinking you're gonna strike. This wakes that hand up. We want this person asleep. When he catches, you always go forward, no matter what the technique is. You see so many trying to pull away, trying to get into these motions, trying to get into kicks. When someone catches you, when you've been caught, it's instant to come forward. But you're checking your area around it, instantly coming forward. I'm going to show you a couple of the techniques used in this. What we deal with at the beginning is non-lethal force. This person has grabbed you here. You cannot, you cannot go smashing in with some kind of technique uh, that's going to break his jaw or his nose or whatever. You, you do not have that right legally. You cannot stomp his knee or break his knee. The man grabbed you. Maybe he's asking for the time. Maybe he needs help. You just don't know. So you have to use legal techniques that are going to get this man off. Training to come forward. Relaxing. And this is very basic. This is where your training must begin. The basics. Always looking up. Never looking at the person's center area. You're always checking. But teaching yourself to come forward. Teaching yourself to come forward. The very first technique Devastating, again, we don't throw punches or anything. You want to get him off you. You're going to come to the jawbone here. And you're just going to pop him forward and just push him off here. Now, you got him off you. You got him off you. And that's very important. So many people try to fight back, strike the arm, trying to fight the person. And you're right, I could, I could hurt Jack, I could put him down, and I could damage this person. Legally, I don't have a right ever to damage someone, break his wrist, or to smash his head because he's grabbed me. The biggest thing is you want to get him off, and this is going to be used for a higher level technique, so it's, this is absolutely one of the most important things you must understand, is never fighting back. You're going to become a shadow. You're caught, you move on him, whatever it's going to be. Right now we're just going to get him off with a very simple technique to the jawbone here. You're just going to come forward, you're caught, so another he steps back, you're talking to someone, boom, he's caught you. You sense it as a threat, you're just going to come forward. He doesn't feel a thing. His arm is see strong. He's not going to feel a thing. You're just coming to him, shoving him off. From here, you're going to have to decide if he's going to come back, what your decisions are going to be made. This is used for any kind of a grab. Let me borrow you, Bob. 
because now the problem's here. This is what people don't deal with. I see so many great people out there dealing with martial art techniques, and I've seen a lot of great videos, but they don't deal with this. They deal with people their size, or a little bit smaller, a little bit taller. This is a big man, very, very strong man. I cannot fight his strength. I absolutely cannot do anything with this man. As soon as I pull away, he is going to do some severe damage. Must get this man off as soon as you're caught. So again, you're standing there, he's caught you, boom. You sex the damage immediately. You're just coming forward. And this is so important. Your instinct is to go away. Never go away. You have to train yourself. You saw it, again, going to the bridge of the jawbone, just, just popping him off from here. Now, this is a very simple technique, and it probably won't work for a man this big. Now we're going to have to change things. For a smaller man, I can pop him off like I demonstrated here for the bridge line. Now we're going to have to use a technique that's used for everything. As you watch the higher level gun techniques or whatever, knife, it's here. The hand's going to come forward here. Here, the hand's going to be forward here. As it hits here, I don't care where it is, the hand closes into a fist. He's caught me here, I've got to get this guy off. His hand's in a fist. Again, I did not go to his eyes. I did not do severe damage. Maybe this guy's a star football player or whatever, drank too much. I can't wreck his eyes or whatever. I can't maybe hurt his leg. And this is another fallacy, too, where people think people fall down when you kick them. It's not going to happen. This man, I do not have enough power to take this man apart, especially if he's on drugs, um, drinking a little booze or whatever. He's going to be powerful. You must teach yourself to come forward. Powerful technique, you just came forward, got him off you. And you have to take it to the power that's going to go. Now, this is going to be used. It's a cross grab. Um, we've got both hands. Here we are again. So many people in the martial arts or whatever want their arm. I don't want my arm. I don't want my arm. He's tied up. He's tied up. This is very, very good. I can look, make my decision where I want to take it. I can make my decision where I want to go. You will never see me pull back trying to kick. Because as soon as I do that, he's, we've, got a, we've got a fight going on. I don't want that fight. I'll look, I'll decide. Maybe I just want to pop him in the mouth. Make him let go. But of course, take it to the level that you have to. You're going to see me move in on this guy. You're going to see me move in, get him off. You must have the mindset of coming forward. And this is um, difficult to grasp because your body has an instinctive motion to fight the arms. Never fight the arms. Never ever fight his strength. He's just too strong. You're just going to come forward. You're just going to come forward into this person. You got him off. Didn't damage him. You got him off. He may come back, as we'll talk in this tape a little later, what to do if he comes back. But you got him off. You can apologize. Maybe it'll stop the fight right there. Buy him a beer, whatever it takes. Do not fight this man. You want to keep the legal consequences of going down. Constantly understanding the legal consequences are so important. You see people taking glasses and smashing it in their face, striking their groin, always going to the eyes. If you wreck this man's career or his job, you're going to be paying a lot of money just because he grabbed you. He didn't hurt you. He grabbed you. Totally legal. When you go to a court of law, the one that has the best lawyer wins. And it's too expensive to deal with lawyers and there's not a reason to deal with one. Now, this is used for everything. This is used. Maybe he's got me by the lapels. Again, Bob's a very strong man, and you are not going to make these techniques work. I see this constantly out there. This is a fantasy. Anyone that says this is going to work, it, it's, this is a dream. I ask you, why is it that you would do all this when you just look in his face, attack his weakest point? I do not understand why people attack this man's strength. Maybe I'm here, I'm just going to grab him by the hair. Get, get your hands off me. You're going to notice it will be striking the back of the head a lot. But again, I cannot, and you should not, use legal force. You see, many people think they're going to come up with knees. Well, you're standing on one foot, first of all. You're standing on one foot, and we're talking about survival. Where I'm from in Alaska, you're standing in ice and snow constantly. Maybe you're on the beach. These techniques aren't going to work. When I'm on one foot and he's starting to push me around a little bit, you're, you're not going to have anything. You're not going to have anything. He's going to throw you on the ground. So immediately, no matter how you're caught, you absolutely relax. You're going forward on this person without legal, legal 
problems. You're getting them off you. You may have to take it up. Now, if there was another person, Jack, now I've got two people. Now I have to crank it up and to decide. As you watch this video, this person here is nothing but a shield. He's always with the mindset of a shield. I don't want to ever get rid of my shield because maybe he's got a knife or gun. And you're never going to see me throw this man down because I've just lost my shield. Any size. Now, again, everything's different. He's got me in the lapels. You're right. I can hurt Jack. And this is what you see. You know, both the lapels here. This is what you see. You see all these techniques, and, you know, and this is what you see. Well, you're right. I can take him down. I can, I can look good. But when you deal with the other part of the world, which people are bigger than you, that's a totally different mindset. So you have to grasp that understanding. Let me step on Jack. People attack people because they think they can win. They either want money, or they're going to uh, hurt you or your family, or maybe you're a police officer. Um, things are going to go very, very wrong. And if you have any other kind of mindset, thinking that this might work, because we trained in our karate school or maybe just our uh, training hall, uh, it's not going to work. And that's, that's what you have to get out of your mind because these people have weapons and they have friends. And we have to get them off in one second. Hey, last chance to take advantage of my YouTube flash giveaway. Get this foot long fixed blade Titan with an awesome sheath for free. There are now less than 200 available, but if you hurry and you're willing to pay a small shipping fee, I'll rush you out this $70 badass blade right away. Self-defense tip number one. Hey crew, Mark Hadmaker here, Dan Marks assisting me. Thank you, brother. Uh, kind of via request of saying, hey, can you just off the top of your head give me maybe top five self-defense moves? And I would go, sure, we can do that. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to present five to you. Am I going to say they're the top? No, because I don't know what's at the top. It depends on the situation. Are we top? Are we we're sitting in a chair? Are we uh, hanging off a hang glider? Are we sitting in a bar? Are we laying down? Are we sleep in the bed? It's five o'clock in the morning. I'm holding a baby in my left arm. I don't know what it is. It depends on, because everything is state and situation dependent. I mean, you guys get this as well. It'd be kind of like saying, hey, I've never played football before. What's the top five moves? And you're going, what? We understand, we would hear the kind of uh, the absurdity of trying to pin something down. But with that said, I am going to give you five ideas that I think are simple, pragmatic, fairly easy to assimilate with a little bit of training, and uh, everything requires a little bit of work to it, but the, the best kind of self-defense things are, re, uh, are, are simple, pragmatic, and have utilitarian uh, aspects to them. Uh, one we've addressed in, uh, uh, I think, many times before in other video clips and in other videos, we talk a good deal about neck punching. We pull this from the old school, early days of pugilism and early days of uh, frontier rough and tumble, which is our background, old school boxing, old school wrestling, old school historical uh, frontier rough and tumble, which is all about meanness. And uh, neck punching is, uh, let me see, how do I define it? You punch a guy in the neck. That's basically it. You can take your standard three uh, top boxing punches. You're gonna have your jab, your cross, you're gonna have your hook. And under here, Dan has a, a throat somewhere. My jab would be looking for this. My uh, cross is looking for this, and the side of the neck, I'm looking here. Now, if I accidentally missed and hit the jaw hinge or hit him in the ear, I don't go, oh, I'm a bad rough and tumbler. You're fine, right? You still hit something, brother, right? Um, you can throw them in combination. That's the beauty of them as well. The wisdom of them from the old uh, pugilist game is the fact that they're hand savers. I'm not hitting this hard bone up in here, and they can be thrown from neutral positions because you don't have to have much stink on them. I, I got to throw harder to knock Dan out, and I can throw a, a lot lighter to hit soft tissue. So that's the key in all these, whether it's you're just hitting these, hitting neck, flowing and blowing, and taking off. And keep in mind, we're not wanting to stick around for stuff. You want to stun and run and take off out of there. You're not trying to be man stopper and finishers unless the situation calls for it. It's primarily, oh, this stuff has happened. You got to go to work. If you're sticking around to make sure you've annihilated and killed, then uh, you just might be a bully. I, I, I don't know. You're just trying to stop things, right? So number one, I'm going to say throat punching. Uh, number two, and again, the number, you can skew the number, and you know, I think three is more important than one, then I would say, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, you gotta do what works for you, okay? Number two, in, the, in this particular case, work in the eyes. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Whether you're gonna be using finger jabs, you're gonna stack up those fingers as such, close them this way, we see this, we got some coverage. Just not this spearing thing right here, which each finger is kind of only eating a primary bit of the force and the load here. So I'm crossing those in front, 
and turn this around right here. If I'm making a rude gesture, that's just gravy on top of the whole thing. So if that spear is coming out, we, you know, Dan, uh, it doesn't matter how strong and big, he's 25 pounds on me, but his eyelids, he's never worked out once because he's lazy. So that's not gonna be a problem for me to spear him in the eyes. Also not a, hold up your hand, palm out, please, like this. Like this. It's also not a problem just to back whip. I'm just trying to let my hand go loose and whip someone in the eyes. It's not a problem to have my hands, oh no. And same thing, whip someone across the eyes. Eye attacks in any manifestation, spearing, I actually think it's overrated. I think just slapping and whipping in the face, there's a, there's a whole lot of just quick little whips out of it. It's amazingly useful because people either flinch, get hit in the eye, and everyone goes, oh, Cordius, hold on time. And you go, no, there is no time. You're either stunning and running or finishing the job. So neck, then we go right to the whipping in the eyes. Pretty easy stuff so far. Also, I'd say there's a lot to be said for in tight is going for ripping. Um, First and foremost, when you are on the ground and someone says, I don't learn grappling because I know all about ripping and tearing, let me disabuse you from that. If you're on the ground facing someone who is good enough to take you to the ground and they're on top of you and think, well, I'll put the bite in, the rip, the gouge, or the tear, and you know, that equalizes it. No, no. If they were good enough to put you down there, as soon as you up the ante and say, I'm gonna rip and tear, the guy on top who is good enough to put you there and has the skills to do so, they will rip and tear and they're gonna be better at it in a better position and hurt you for doing it. You need to have skills. You wanna make sure that you, it'd be as, as similar to uh, you going, I don't have to learn boxing because I just know how I'll, I'll, I'll hit someone in the throat once. As soon as one guy, a good boxer gets hit in the throat once, he goes, oh, is that what we're doing? Anyone who has skills, and then you let them add stink on top of their skills, they're gonna be better at it, all right? So you can't think your mere reach for dirty tactics will equalize you. Dirty tactics are great, I love them, they float my boat, but you're gonna have to have the base of the boxing and wrestling behind it. So now Mark will step off that soapbox and come back over here and talk about if we are in tight, whether it's clinching on the ground, yes, I do wanna rip and tear, I don't care if it's ears, grabbing that ear, pull forward, I mean, down, that's how it rips off. Same thing with the hair, you get a hold of hair, and there's a lot of hair out here in this video right now. It does that straight out, it goes against the grain, forward and down from here, forward and back, you wanna rip, snatch, anything you got, grab it and tear it and rip it. So we want the throat, we want the eyes, we want the ripping and tearing, and there's a lot to be said for gouging. Anything can be gouged. Well, I don't know, we know it's gonna be throats, neck, this. I mean, it's, it's all gonna be from in tight position. I, I'm not saying this is where we do gouging. He's threatening me and I go, aha, and I step in and gouge. I'm saying we've closed, we're working. I'm grabbing all those love handles and I'm squeezing the hell out of these things. I'm ripping them, gouging them, tearing them constantly to make him have stimulus pops as he's moving around. Do these end fights, the ripping and the gouging and tearing? Not necessarily, but it's just uh, collateral damage along the way to getting back to the eyes and the throat and everything else that's going on. So that was four. So Mark, what's this top five? Well, I'm gonna tell you, there's only one that will get, I mean, these may not even have to be the top five. These are off the top of my head, top five. We'll call it that. Number five, which should be number one in all circumstances, Ron? Get the hell out of there. Don't be there, don't be in a bad situation. We're talking about using these tactics. We're in a place where you don't have choice. These are your fallbacks and go-to. And what if you don't have an opportunity to run? Did I get you? That's what we're doing here. Run is number one. And it really, before one, it's your awareness, your mindset. If you're paying attention all the time, that can go a long way uh, to fixing things for you. Because often when you hear about a fight, say, I got in a fight the other night, where were you? At the bar. Oh. You don't hear like, I was in a fight the other night where I was at church camp. And he went, really? Now that's the story we want to hear. All right, so if you're using awareness and common sense, I'm not saying don't go to bars, of course not. I'm just saying awareness, good choices, running, be a pussycat, avoid alter, uh, altercations. But if you have to use stuff, well, they respond. Hey, don't forget about those deadly hand-to-hand -hand moves. This training is yours for free from the link in the description. I honestly don't know how long I'll be allowed to give this stuff away here as it's pretty over the top stuff. So get to the description right away. Thanks for watching our video lessons here at TRS Direct. Hit the like button down below and consider subscribing to our channel here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon and we'll send you a notification when there's a new lesson available. Thanks again for watching.